All right, so the Ryzen 2400 is one of the best budget CPUs available right now. And today we're gonna take a greater look at the performance in the built-in graphics, the AMD Radeon RX Vega 11. How good is it and what happens if you overclock it? Can you actually play high-end demanding games on this $150 cheap CPU? Actually, it is an APU, but whatever. Let's find out, guys. Hey, how is it? going guys robin here on chips media bringing you with the best tips and tools for gaming on the channel you'll find pc components tech gadgets and console accessories as well as product reviews such as this one so if you're interested in that consider subscribing in this video we're gonna take a look at the best budget gaming cpu the ryzen 2400 how good is it really performance wise and how many frames per second can you actually expect with the 2400g in modern games when we apply some overclocking on it will it be possible to gain as much as 10 fps by increasing the clock speed on the rx vega because if it's possible i would definitely question if you really need a dedicated gpu for a setup like this in the first place now we already know that right out of the box we're able to max out games like csgo as well as overwatch but more demanding games like fortnite PUBG, and battlefield definitely has a struggle on the 2400G but yeah let's look at the specs shall we we got a CPU with 4 cores and 8 threads running at 3.6 gigahertz at base and moves up all the way to 3.9 during boosts now we got a GPU as well the Vega 11 of course with 11 compute units see that makes sense right and the core clock is 1250 megahertz now this APU has a little brother as well it's called the Ryzen 3 2200G and costs $89 while the Ryzen 5 2400G costs around $150 US dollars that is an absolute steal for quad core quad thread and quad core 8 thread processors respectively in fact forgetting for a moment that these ryzen apus include vega graphics on the ship as well where in previously the first gen processors had none these new cpus are both faster and cheaper than the parts they effectively replace with overclocking we should be able to squeeze even more juice out of these two now remember the 2400g is very cheap package altogether thanks to amd putting both the cpu and graphics chip into the same ship we're actually able to play fairly demanding games on this yeah little baby maybe and if you're willing to scale back on the settings in the most demanding games out there because it's so cheap makes it highly interesting for us gamers that is looking for a entry level setup that works for the most popular games out there you can actually make a quite powerful system that would outperform the core i3 8100 and an nvidia gt 10 30 in most games out there and also save money which makes this the cheapest and most affordable gaming pc that you can buy right now as of making this video if you're not interested in the used market now this system has several benefits one of them being you can invest in a dedicated graphics card later down the line if you want even better performance and if you're not 100 satisfied with the onboard vega graphics now time for some numbers guys what can you expect from the 2400g right out of the box Now, talking about overclocking, how complicated is it? It's very easy to be frank. All you need is AMD Ryzen Master, and AMD have told us that the SOC and GFX voltage are strongly correlated. And by increasing the SOC voltage by a little, you can increase the clock speed by around 3 to 400 megahertz. I ended up with 1500 megahertz on the core clock. That's about 350 megahertz increase. Now, let's have a look. Look at the results.
can see guys this APU isn't so bad and it actually outperforms the GT 1030 by good measure now if you find the 150 US dollars too much AMD is once again selling a slightly cheaper model as well the 20 the 2200 G with slightly slower clock speeds for under 100 US dollar all right so we've seen overclocking we've seen stock clocks now what happens when you throw in a dedicated GPU well since I've got a GTX 970 here similar performance as the GTX 1060 let's have a look at that as well and as you can clearly see guys the CPU itself is not gonna be a bottleneck even at 4k it's not gonna be a problem and the bottleneck is going to shift over from the cpu to the gpu itself the difference is almost gone completely out of the equation if you set this pc up against the 77k for example which is known for being one of the fastest cpus for pc gaming in gameplay reality at 4k we're essentially talking three to five frames per second at most this is as i said as we move up in resolution the bottleneck shifts more onto the GPU more and more and so the CPU becomes less important if your main goal is to game at 4k resolution guys 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 this is in my opinion the best and cheapest CPU GPU combo that you can get right now links down below and guys that's it now I want to know do you find this idea affordable and would it be possible to save even more money here let me know in the comments below guys and yeah thank you so much for watching this video until next time have an awesome day right bye